How's it going guys? It seems like it's been forever since I've covered Lords of the Fallen. They took a little spring break, didn't put out a patch last week and I think maybe the week before and that was after several just maintenance patches. I also got busy, was doing other things and it seemed to coincide with their little break and their several maintenance patches right in a row. I didn't feel it was necessary to cover every single maintenance patch that came out, so I didn't. And I started releasing more Elden Ring content, and also, I started playing Dragon's Dogma. I tried to stream it one day, I don't like streaming as much as just making videos, and when I tried to stream it, it crashed. And it crashed whenever it came to a cutscene or whenever I entered certain type of menus, and some of the crashing uh, got better like the next day and about two days in some of the quality of life stuff that was missing and a lot of the issues I was having with the game cleared up I think they did some stealth patching behind the scenes but it leads me to question whether or not Dragon's Dogma 2 or Lords of the Fallen had a bumpier start and I honestly believe that Dragon's Dogma 2 had the bumpier release and I'm gonna do a video about that and all the innumerable things that were wrong uh, Lords of the Fallen was in a better state upon it, its release, I do believe, but that's for a later date. I'm going to get into this latest patch of Lords of the Fallen, 1.1.664. Now this patch is so short, I'm just going to go through the entire list. Um, the first fixes are going to be with multiplayer. They fixed an issue that could prevent connections from being established between players when using a password under special circumstances. They fixed an issue that made Kukajin's statue reappear for the co-op partner when the host rested. They fixed an issue that could cause the client's input to malfunction in shops when selling items too fast using a controller. They fixed an issue that could cause certain cinematics to be inconsistent for co-op partners and an issue that could cause co-op partner's character to appear in cinematics under special circumstances. Uh, when it comes to PvP balancing, they increased the mana cost of Aura of Tenacity from 3 mana per second to 7.5 mana per second, increased the mana cost of Invigorating Aura from 5 mana per second to 15, and they increased the mana cost of Barbed Aura, Barbed Aura, from one mana per second to three mana per second. Now, I'm a I'm an ag guy. I'm an ag guy. I say mana, but I know it's mana. And that's why it was so hard for me to go from mana to barbed. I would have said, under you know normal circumstances, talking amongst friends, I would have said mana cost of barbed aura, but I said mana cost of barbed aura. And it just made it sound like carbon aura. I don't know. But uh, as far as the user interface, they fixed an issue that caused the fine-tuned UI to stay on the screen even when changing to other face customization tabs. Uh, an issue that could cause the UI prompt flow to break when trying to create a new character with full save slots. And they exchanged the SSD warning UI element with a smaller one that does not require a player confirmation. Uh, with visuals, they fixed an issue that would cause VFX cast by Rogar Hounds to display incorrectly and an issue that caused certain assets to display incorrectly when using graphic settings ultra or cinematic near the vestige of Blind Agatha in particular. Uh, items, they fixed an issue that allowed players to duplicate shrine armor pieces with the coffer. God, dupe, duping bugs are great. Don't ever fix those. Uh, fixed an issue that prevented the quest item Pride of the Bucket Lords to display properly in the game world. As far as bosses, uh, they fixed an issue that could cause Pieta, She of Blessed Renewal, to remain idle under special circumstances and an issue that would cause Hush Saint to focus on a single target when summoning an NPC. Uh, under the other category in the final four things, they fixed a crash that could occur when selecting continue after leaving the load menu, the load game menu. They fixed an issue that could cause the player camera to break when being hit by the trap in the ice cave in Thief of the Chill Curse. They fixed an issue that could cause the Remembrance Shop inventory to reset under certain circumstances. And they added a new message to indicate when the game is compiling shaders. Additionally, they've increased the time taken to compile shaders on the initial loading screen to prevent hitches during gameplay. And they have some additional items in the roadmap. 
So we'll take a look at that next time. But that is patch 1.1.664, another maintenance patch. I don't run across any of these bugs, but if you are suffering from them, they're continuing to fix this game and it's in playable condition. Uh, it's a good game. Uh, replayability is another question. And right now I'm playing Dragon's Dogma 2 and I'm such a completionist, I did everything that I could before the true ending and getting locked out of side quest although I did accidentally lock myself out of one important side quest but that's what new game plus is for right isn't it but without any further ado uh, wish you a great day and peace